Hello everyone, it me, Australia, and today I shot several people and committed several federal crimes. Now before you get worried for me, I was playing Jetpack Joyride. Sometimes I like to take my gaming on the go because you know I just can't stop gaming, you know? Mobile gaming is huge, I mean specifically in the last decade the industry has gone absolutely massive. Since the Game Boy, DS, and iPhone all came out, it's clear that while handhelds like the Steam Deck and Switch are doing great, mobile phone gaming has gone completely downhill. Mobile phone gaming used to be full of creativity, fun, and originality, and it's now been reduced to ads, microtransactions, and laziness. But how do we even get here? Well, we have to start in the 80s, baby, the start of all our problems. The idea of a home console was taking off. I mean, if you ignore the whole video game crap thing, but the products were flying off the shelves. Home consoles completely eliminated the inconvenience of going to the arcade and socializing, so now you can be a lonely loser at home. Radical! But people wanted more. They wanted to be addicted to these gosh darn things wherever they went. And so what better way to do that than with the Game Boy, one of the first major forays into what we now know as handheld gaming. Yeah, I know the Game & Watch technically came out 10 years prior, but the concept was much different from the Game Boy, which was taking home gaming on the go. Go. Nintendo was the dominant force at this time, so when they created this brick with few colored graphics, people just went bananas over this. You know, I still don't understand how this beat competitors like the Game Gear or the Atari Lynx. Like, are you serious? For one, the thing has no backlight, and like I mentioned, puke colored graphics. So not only could you barely see, but what you could see looks like some of my worst bowel movements. Also, this thing needs like four AA batteries. I can't afford that. But I guess it didn't matter because it only went on to sell, oh my god, 119 million units. But let's not forget the iterations of the Game Boy that contributed to that number. First, the Game Boy Pocket. The Pocket iteration was cheaper, smaller, lighter, it needed less batteries. Oh, and those batteries? Um, they're AAA now instead of AA, which I think is better! Unfortunately, the screen isn't too much better. I mean, yeah, it's not green anymore, but you still can't even see it. Either way, this feels so much better in my hand, and as far as the name goes, I can confirm. Next up, the Game Boy Light, adding everybody's favorite feature, the power of the sun. So this model had basically no differences from the original, except it looked nicer, it only needed two AA batteries, it had full backlight so you could play in the dark, and oh my god, are you kidding me? Japan only? As an American, I feel discriminated. Next up, the Game Boy Color, featuring all 16 colors of the rainbow. Not to mention, this screen had a lot more flavors of puke this time around, but I'm still not a fan. The screen is still not backlit. How do you go through all of these iterations, even when one includes a backlight, and you still forget to include it? But hey, you can barely see hints of color now. Oh yeah! Now after four iterations, Nintendo finally moved on from the Game Boy. Never mind. Okay, get this. 90 goddamn degrees. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know what the point of this was apart from a hardware upgrade and landscape mode. Okay, fine. The games were technically better quality, but it's just pixels. I don't care. Screw this. I'm time traveling. Oh my god, it worked. <gasps> The Game Boy Advance SP! It had a good screen! Now this is where you can really see the DS starting to take shape with the clamshell design, as this came out literally like one year before it, but oh my god, I'm glad they made this! The SP is by far the most comfortable and enjoyable way of experiencing every single Game Boy game. It fits perfect in the hand, the screen is bright and colorful, there's no need for batteries, it's beautiful. I haven't even mentioned the amount of games that came out for this thing, I mean it was incredible. And for such a versatile lineup of systems, it was amazing. But something big was coming. Now it's the mid 2000s, the iPhone still hasn't come out yet, and mobile gaming was pretty much dominated by Nintendo. So they just kept going. And so they created a brand new system which took up 8% of the alphabet. The DS. Now there is no way Nintendo kept up the momentum from the Game Boy, and so I'm guessing nobody bought this thing. It only went on to sell 154 units. Times a million. Imagine the Game Boy Advance SP, but slap another screen on the bottom and stretch that bad boy out. Perfect. The DS took the world by storm. Not only could it run Mario, but 3D Mario. Now luckily there weren't that many iterations like the Game Boy, so this will be pretty quick, but basically 
This is the sexy one, and this is the ugly friend. The amount of games that came out for this system are even more insane, and there are some questionable ones, but for the most part, I would make love to this thing. Uh, I remember the good old days, playing new Super Mario Bros on the bus, getting the giant mushroom, and murdering my friends. It was super fun. The first two DS models had Game Boy support as well, which meant you could play all of those games on top of the DS games. I'm just, I'm, I'm struggling to put the Switch games in. And Nintendo really loved this console. I mean, they only gave it one revision, which is kind of uncommon for Nintendo. And it was the DSi and the DSi XL. Now, compared to the original two models, the DSi gutted the Game Boy support. It added two cameras and 20% more loneliness. But the biggest thing it added was a proper OS and main menu, which paved the way for digital downloads. This is where mobile gaming has a revolution. The iPhone was just invented, which allowed for mobility unlike anything we've seen before. Now you can send messages to your friends, shoot them, and more importantly, download games. The iPhone was an entire touchscreen. There were no buttons and you only used your fingers. And so developers had a whole new world of gameplay to discover. No longer did you need that stupid controller. Throw it away and use those fingies. So let's have a rapid fire round of all the great games that came out during the golden era of the iPhone. Let's start with Angry Birds, one of the biggest games ever created on mobile phones. It's just war crimes. But what's more important is that this was created for touch screen. It was created for a phone. And it was good. Temple Run for when you want to get chased by monkeys. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, you fuck. Swipe left, swipe right, jump up and slide down. Just don't let those goddamn monkeys touch you. Doodle Jump. Tilt the entire gosh darn phone to win and make sure this silly little alien makes it to the top. If you don't, you will be convicted and sentenced to life for your murderous acts. Jetpack Joyride for even more heinous crimes, but this time against your co-workers. I just wanted a pay raise. Clash of Clans for when you just need to pump that elixir, bro. Also for when you just want to check up on the goblin that lives here. I don't know, man. I, I kind of feel bad, but something's going on with that guy. I don't know what it is. He's always got plans, but I never see him leave the house. He's up to something devious. I just don't know what it is. I mean, come on, look at his face. He's got something going on with him. I, I, I don't like it. Fruit Ninja. Utilizing the touch screen and swiping hard. Now you can finally quench your thirst for slicing those damn bananas. I'm sure you love it. Cut the rope. Now you can feed this thing and give him an abundant amount of sugar. God, I love America. You can do this by, get this. Oh my god. Subway surfers! Now you can spray graffiti in a subway system and only one man seems to care. Although I can't help but notice the horrible inefficiencies here. I mean, the public transport in the city is not well funded, as you can clearly tell. Actually, come to think about it, why is the iPhone the main culprit behind all of this new crime? It's all Steve's fault. Well, I guess I can't convict him anymore. Oh, his sandals are on sale. I can't even name all of the great games that came out on the iPhone during this era. They all, there, there's so many and they were all so good. I don't even remember any of these things having ads. They were pretty much all ad free. And from what I remember, you weren't really pushed into buying anything. You simply downloaded the game, you played it, you had fun, and that was it. While this was happening, Nintendo just couldn't let it go, man. The 3DS was the final iteration of the DS lineup. Scratch that, but it was basically the last major upgrade to the handheld systems. One of the biggest changes for this new DS was a number. Oh, and 3D capabilities. On top of that, a better quality screen and some sick eShop music. Now, they eventually came out with a larger version of the 3DS and then the new 3DS and new 3DS XL. Now, what was different in these new models? A nipple and face tracking 3D. There really wasn't much going on here. Oh wait, we can't forget the 2DS. I don't really understand this. I mean, it was just a slab. I don't know. I mean, it played all DS and 3DS games, but it was effectively the exact same system as the 3DS, just without the 3D and the door hinge. But just you wait, new 2DS XL. What the hell was the point? In case I don't want to play in 3D, but still want a door hinge, done. I still don't understand this. What a stupid product. But it looks like a phone, so... <gasps> now it's the mid-2010s and mobile phones, they are taken off and Nintendo is having a midlife crisis. The DS and Game Boy concept were dying right before their eyes, so Nintendo joined in. Oh my god, Mario can run? Yeah, so this game was just Mario running in one direction for $10? My god. 
There was also some unknown game about pocket monsters or something. I don't know, it looks stupid, but there's no way it would have over a billion players. Don't be ridiculous. How about Mitomo? Yeah. Clearly Nintendo was falling behind, but something new was right around the corner. The Nintendo Switch. Honestly, this just looks like any other console. Really, what was the hype for? Oh my god. Now you can take your gaming on the go. And not just pixelated gaming, but real gaming. Now there is no way Nintendo can continue to sell us on their handhelds. 114 million units. It has been five years, it blew past the Wii, and it's about to slam the Game Boy. Honestly, don't even know how they did it. Solid games, a nice look, something I wouldn't hate myself for playing in public. Actually, what a solid system, and the games were even better. Get this, take the games from this dumpster fire and put them on here. Infinite money. So yeah, this thing was pretty epic. But what about phones? Around this time, mobile phone gaming was struggling. No longer were amazing games coming out. There was a huge drought, but it wasn't as bad as it is today. Most people were getting used to whipping the phone out and playing some Clash of Clans when they got bored, but that's about to change. It's the 2020s, baby, and Nintendo has continued to do great until they stopped trying. Yeah, the games just stopped coming out after 2019 or so, or at least the good ones. That being said, they did create a smaller, more portable version of the Switch, which can't connect to a TV. Why? What's the point of this? So I can have a downgraded experience, I can't take the controllers off, and the screen is smaller? Oh my god, I can save $100. Just buy the normal one for God's sake. They also came out with the Switch OLED. What? Okay, fine, it looks nicer, and I think the battery might be better, but who is this targeting? It's nearly 2023, and we still don't have a Switch Pro. If it doesn't happen by the end of 2024, I'm going to lose my marbles! The hardware is so old at this point, like, yeah, it can run some games, but not well. Look, I'm okay with 1080p, but come on. And I still can't see my boy Zelda in 60 FPS. What kind of world? What kind of world is this? But I guess if they don't have any competition, eh, what's the point? The Steam Deck. The only company brave enough to fight against Nintendo while emulating their games. The Steam Deck is miles ahead of the Switch in terms of hardware, freedom of use, customization, and just generally being a solid system. Do I think it'll beat the Switch or provide heavy competition for Nintendo? I mean, let's not kid ourselves. It's Nintendo. They sold us 10 handhelds with the letters DS in it. They're fine. Plus, most people are not hacker gaming gamers and don't really want to go through all the effort of legally emulating Switch games. On the Switch, I pop the cartridge in, I press the power button, and boom. But what about phones in the 2020s? Help me. Nowadays, there are 15 town halls in Clash of Clans. The upgrades take three weeks with resources I don't have. Not to mention the push to spend money. Oh my god, no. Everyone just wants me to give them money. Have you seen my bank account? Not only that, but the games are just garbage now. I'll be scrolling through the internet, as one does, and I will get an ad for a game that looks fun. There are two ways this ad could go. Most of the time, it's just telling you you suck. I bet you can't beat me as I continue to fail playing this game. They play the game so poorly, it's like they're not even looking at the screen, and they think this entices me? Who do they take me for, some sort of idiot? And if it's not that, the ad is just some completely fake game. Like, this isn't even the game anymore, you're just creating it out of thin air. Literally, none of this makes me want to download your game, or hell, even watch the advertisement advertisement itself. And they won't stop. They will keep advertising over and over and over again so that you know Merge Mansion is burned into your brain. And oh my god, I love this game. But one of my biggest problems recently is the fact that a bunch of these games being mass advertised are literally bare bones. We used to have art, real art. We used to have character, names, recognition, and now Red Person. Oh my god! Not to mention the most sterile background imaginable. Like, holy shit, white floor, blue sky, I am in purgatory. Uh, anyone who downloads these games, I will end you. Stop giving them your money. So what do I think is gonna happen? Well, I think that handheld gaming could potentially have a renaissance, like a new golden era for the medium. But phone gaming, 
we've we've moved past the golden era. We're we're far gone from it. But I can't leave you guys hanging, so let me time travel one more time. My god, it worked. No. No, no, this can't be. Join the metaverse, Austin. What? Don't worry, Austin. No, 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 you can't make me. We are live from my backyard. No! You will join the metaverse, Austin.